Hey guys, I am going to do a full review of the ZTE Z Max Pro. Now this is a new device, it's a relatively new device, and I was able to get hands on of the Z Max Pro, which is pretty amazing. And there are a lot of good things and a few bad things, um, some cons and some pros, but mostly pros. And I will be talking about that. And at the end of the video, I'll share my thoughts if the $100 that is spent on this phone is worth it or not. So let's get right into the full review. So before anything, I want to go over the design. The design the design is very nice. It it is plastic. It's just made out of plastic, but it feels like aluminum. When I first touched the side rails here, I thought it was aluminum, um, but it is plastic. Um, it does feel like aluminum for real, and it, it just looks like aluminum and it feels like it. It feels pretty um, nice. And this power button and the volume button is on the same side, but they are extremely tactile and clicky, which I really like. In some phones, they aren't the most clicky um, buttons. But um, there's the SIM card tray, micro SD card slot up to 32 gigabytes. There is the 13 megapixel camera. LED flash and a fingerprint scanner, which is I think the first for a $100 phone If we move on right here, there is a speaker which is decent and I'll get to that later And USB type C port which is interesting too um, And then in the front you have these capacitive button home um, recent apps and back button and That is pretty much the over um, view of and of course the headphone jack. So that was the overview of these um, the design. And the back is just a soft touch plastic with a very nice texture to it. It's kind of a fingerprint magnet, but it's not really a fingerprint magnet. It just shows a little bit of fingerprints. And this blue look reminds me a lot of the Nexus um, 6 from back in the day, really big phone. Um, yeah. Speaking of big phones, this is an absolutely enormous phone. It's a 6-inch full HD display, so it's a 1080p um, IPS display. Although the display isn't the best 1080p display you can find on the market, it is a pretty decent decent um, screen, much, 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 much better than 720p displays. So one of the more interesting um, aspects of this particular $100 phone is the fingerprint scanner. It's mostly found in high-end phones these days or even mid, mid um, kind of a middle phones. Um, but the fingerprint scanner is exis existent, although it's not the fastest fingerprint scanner, as you can see. I just pulled down on it and it takes just a, over a second to unlock the phone. Um, you can do this when the phone is turned off, which is like Nexus-like, which I kind of like. Um, but that, that's interesting. That was very interesting when I first um, held the phone. It's Again, it's a very big phone, so people with small hands might not like this phone. So if you have small hands or if you don't like using small phones or big phones, that's big phones I meant, um, then you should probably look for another phone. Now let's get into the software and just the performance itself. So the perf it has been performing pretty well. I've been using it for about two weeks now and the performance is definitely, definitely better than the Galaxy On 5. It's much faster, it's just much better with the two gigabytes of RAM versus one gigabyte in the Galaxy On 5 and just the whole animation is much smoother um, and just the when you open up, there are barely any lags or stutters except when you play um, high graphics games like Asphalt or anything like that. Sometimes the recent uh, recent screen kind of lags out a lot. Uh, I mean, considering that it only has two gigabytes of RAM, it can happen. But just remember that it's a hundred dollar phone. Whenever I remember that, I kind of impressed by it. Now let's get into the software. A user interface, the UI. The UI is very stock-like. Um, it has very, uh, very. I really like this wallpaper, but 
Okay, I'm getting off task. But normally, Android N or M, it has an Android Marshmallow, and normally you just swipe. But if you swipe, it won't go down, which I found it very annoying. You have to actually press it down, and then you have to draw the pattern, or you can just do the fingerprint. But I found that really annoying. That's one of the worst parts, uh, in my opinion, um, about the user interface. And another bad thing that I really don't like is this translucency. Like, they almost copied Apple, um, iOS, which Apple loves to do transparency stuff. Um, just doesn't look as pleasing as if, as, um, if it was, like, a, just a solid background color. And also, this just lags out a lot, too. Like, it's not the best user interface. Um, if we go into settings, you can see that it's just really stock like and also if you just go to the notification drop down um, this part is all stock Android like and even the app drawer is vertical which not a lot of phone manufacturers have been using the vertical um, app drawer and the volume buttons are super clicky as I said before and these buttons unfortunately cannot be customized so People are um, that are who are moving in from the Galaxy on Five or any other Galaxy phones. Um, you can't switch these back and forth because they don't have a software optimization that does that. Now let's move on to the camera, a very important aspect of the phone, and this camera is just I'll say okay. So the camera app is right here. It's their own camera app, and. Here, I'll just take a random photo. It's uh, it's pretty speedy, as you can see. If I turn HDR on, which is a nice addition, it's a lot slower because it needs to save and process everything. Let's take a picture of that eraser right there. And HDR on. And the picture quality really is okay. It's pretty dim, and the details aren't the best and it's very blurry and that's because it doesn't have OIS but again it's a hundred dollar phone so you got to respect that and the front facing has an 8 megapixel selfie camera which is decent I found it to be very decent um, so and it this phone has been a really nice experience for me I really liked it um, I am probably gonna go back to my Nexus 6P or my LG V10 and I've been loving this phone. It's super big. That's one of my favorite aspects of the phone um, If it was like five five inch phone, I wouldn't really like it but this amazing display and just the amazing cost really stands out from the crowd so Would you, so someone might ask should I get the Galaxy on 5 or the Galaxy J7 or the Z Max Pro. I would definitely recommend this over both of the devices. J7 is way more expensive than this. It's like 200 something dollars. This is $100. Galaxy on 5 is a little bit cheaper than that. But considering the display, the performance, and the fingerprint scanner, and a better camera, and just a better build overall, and a bigger screen, I would definitely get this. So that was um, my entire review on the Z Max Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you this video informed about the Z Max Pro. And it's an amazing phone. Again, it for the price you're paying. So I would definitely recommend it to people who are willing to pay $100 for a phone. Um, this is probably the um, the way the phone you, you want. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a thumbs up. The, and please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more about the ZTE Z Max Pro. And tell me what videos you want to see about it. Um, just leave comments down below. And thanks for watching. And peace.